Board of Directors, I come to you with a very serious business problem in which is impacting our company, Evergreen Fusion Energy, in which if we leave this unaddressed, will have an impactful and consequential impact our sustainability as an organization and also hinder our ability to be able to be competitive within other renewable energy companies in the world today. So I wanted to bring your attention as I pulled one of the most recent performance reports that our company grew out as we lost over $125,000 in operational costs due to wind turbine fleet issues. Now, because of this, this drew negative sentiments to our investors and shareholders, thus company stock value has dropped. Now, there may be things that are out of our control, such as the macroeconomical issues going on in the nation today. There are some tangible things that we must be able to take into control and also help improve for the betterment of the organization. Now, as a short introduction, my name is Cesar Gonzalez. I'm a senior operations engineer here at Evergreen Fusion Energy. I'm part of the wind engineering team, and my specific focus is on the wind turbine control system. Now, as of lately, and good news for the company is that we have we actually grown our portfolio uh, by 30%. So more wind sites have been added to our overall generational portfolio of renewable. But however, with more assets to maintain, more issues come with it. So as of recent, we've been having an uptick in operational service requests coming from our wind sites, um, more due to on the operational defects coming from our manufacturers. So because of this, uh, with a small engineering team of four engineers, we're not able to keep up. Service requests are being left in our backlog, wind turbines are being left down, thus generational losses are amounting every month. And obviously, because some of these service requests require an intensive amount of troubleshooting, our team is being worn out day by day. Many cases are coming in and it's hard to keep up and we're ending up working late. As a recommendation, we want to create a new team, a specialized team called a root cause analysis team. That way we can get ahead of some of the operational issues that are occurring because of manufacturer defects. One of the main key reasons onto why having a root cost analysis team is more importantly to have a team focus on some of the just emerging issues that are happening and all the unexpected defects that we're getting every time we import new more wind sites. And obviously with all this, it'll help out reduce the escalation of search requests and ultimately also help drive more solutions upstream. So reason number one in my support and research, a root cause analysis team will focus only on the emergent issues and help reduce service request escalation. So with this, they're able to hone in and focus on some of the more critical issues that are occurring within our technology. And we don't have to resort most of our resource time just allocating, trying to find out what's going on in the first place. So based off one of the research articles here from BNC Health, Services research, they actually found out that the root cause analysis process is very helpful, even within a different department or industry, such as the health industry. Reason number two in my supporting document behind it, this also they will help reduce down our wind engineering time resources time allocated to firefighting. So again, our RCA team will be solely focused on finding the root cause of each issue coming from these manufacturing defects and finding countermeasures in order to prevent them from happening. So there's a really good article here, or actually a book called uh, Root Cause Analysis, Improving Performance for Bottom Line Results. And it's written by RJ and Casey Latino, a group of an industrial engineers who helped out and actually advised with some of the most recommended steps in doing sort of that Lean Six Sigma process within a reliability uh, industry. And reason number three in my support and research is having a root cause analysis to go upstream and actually engage the equipment manufacturer to drive solutions. So again, driving up that uh, quality uh, process with the actual people that we get our wind turbines from, they'll be able to provide solutions and fix issues from the start that way we don't have to deal with the uh, ongoing effects that they're dealing with, that we're, I'm sorry, that we're dealing with. So based on some of the most recent, uh, recent research that I found from the International Journal of Quality and Reliability Management, they've actually found out that getting ahead of these issues ahead of time will help reduce some of the work downstream, which is very true. 
So counter argument, so you might wonder more engineers, right? So we have to budget for more people in general. So with that also comes some onboarding and cross training. Now as a rebuttal, what if I tell you with some of the preliminary analysis that we did before we even proposed this is that we made uh, an MPV analysis. So after two years, we'll be receiving what we invested on allocating the budget for the engineers. And within a five year MPV spend, we'll be saving over $1.5 million for the company. On top of that, we'll also be reducing some of the amount of work and labor assigned to our wind controls team, in which we'll be able to ultimately improve the morale. And that's based on one of the research articles here in Alaska Business. So in summary, providing a root cause analysis will help not only acknowledging some of the issues or existing defects we have as a manufacturer or as the manufacturers give to us, they will also provide countermeasures for the manufacturer and drive those quality driven solutions. So we are requesting the board to you, two more engineers at minimum to start out with this new RCA team. Thank you so much for listening. And to close this off, I wanted to end with this. As we're continuously committing to leading the industry in decarbonization and overcoming all these complex issues, we always have to keep the end in mind. And what we're doing is impactful for the world. And then given the wind energy sector a chance with either restructuring some of our team organizations or just coming up with the most innovative solution, every little step that we take is one step closer to decarbonization. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.